Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's, God's mercy endures forever. Let Emmanuel say, God's mercy endures forever. Let all God's children say, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord, the Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punishes, punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give, I give thanks, thanks to you, you, for you have answered me, and, and you have, have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By, By the Lord has this been done. This is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Christ is risen. 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 Christ is risen.
Good morning, family. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to worship on this Easter Sunday. I want all of our listeners and viewers to know that that greeting, good morning, family, extends beyond Emmanuel. For it is in Jesus Christ, through his death and resurrection, that we are children of God and siblings through Jesus, siblings in God's family. So welcome to worship, and uh, God bless you wherever you are this morning. Our radio broadcast is given in memory of Dennis and Danelle Herringay from Judy, so thank you for helping us remember those saints and for supporting our radio ministry broadcast. I also want to thank all those who have given lilies this year. We've tried to use them well. Uh, there is a list of those memorials that you can find at the end of our bulletin today, which can be found at emmanuelfamily.com. And speaking of our website, emmanuelfamily.com, I invite you to check out that website. There is much information on there, such as devotionals and updates and ways that you can give your tithes and offerings to keep the mission of Emmanuel strong and moving forward. Uh, also, again, our bulletin, but our prayer list is included in there. And uh, we invite you to pray for all those on our prayer list and, and hold them fast. Uh, for that is something that we can all do uh, at any time, wherever we are. Uh, to add to our prayer list this morning, I want to first remind you that our prayer intercessors continue to pray for the church and the world around us on a weekly basis. And uh, if you have prayer lists or prayer needs, please give us a call and we will, we will pass those on. Uh, we want to add to our prayer list this morning, DeRay Stephenson. He has been placed on hospice. He's a friend of the congregation. Um, Mavis Langerud's son-in-law, married to her daughter, Karen. And so uh, please keep DeRay and his family in your prayers uh, as he comes to the end of his life. I also invite your prayers for church council. Uh, we'll be meeting Monday, and we're just trying to be creative in our uh, thinking in terms of being faithful and uh, good stewards, and uh, uh, just, again, how can we be the church in this, in this strange and uh, um, distance, distancing time? So we invite your prayers for your leadership, and uh, we thank, that, thank you for them, and we covet them. We now move into our worship. A blessed Easter to you again. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We continue with thanksgiving for baptism. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to go to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font and for the water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life that only you can give, to be given in you honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O God, you have given your only Son to suffer death on the cross for the redemption, and by his glorious resurrection you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue with the reading of God's Word. The first reading is a reading from Jeremiah. 
At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness when Israel sought for rest. The Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. Word of God, word of life. The second reading is a reading from Acts. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. Oh, suddenly it's kind of dark out here. It's almost a half light. Good morning, children. Good morning, kiddos. A blessed Easter to you. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. So do you know who I am? Do you know who this is? You can't see me. Do you know who I am? Yes. Yes, you are right. It's Pastor Rod. Good morning. It's great to be with you today. And I pray that uh, you are well on this Easter Sunday. But how did you know it was me? How did you know that it was me who was speaking to you? Oh, you heard my voice, didn't you? And when you heard my voice, you recognized me. Well, that is just awesome. I bet that I could recognize your voice, too, if, I, if and when I hear it. So in John chapter 10, Jesus says, I... And the Good Shepherd, those who hear my voice, follow me. Um, they know me and follow me, Jesus says. Well, in today's Gospel that I'm going to read in just a moment, Mary, Mary Magdalene, a disciple of Jesus, hears his voice on that first Easter morning uh, when he says her name. He says to her, Mary. She turns, and that's when she recognizes him. When she hears his voice, when he calls her name, she turns and says to him, Rabunai, which means teacher. And it's just a beautiful moment in the gospel that, that, that plays out this promise that Jesus says in chapter 10, uh, I am the good shepherd. Those who hear my voice, they know me and follow me. Well, Jesus knows your name too today. And... Uh, Jesus has known you before you were born. Uh, we're told in Psalm 139 that he knew you before you were born when you were being knit together in your mother's womb. And so Jesus has known you for a long time. He has known your name. 
So when you, like Mary, find yourself in uh, in the dark or in a half-lit morning and you're, you're afraid or confused or uh, worried, you can call on Jesus. Uh, he knows your name. Uh, he, he hears your voice. He hears your prayers. And he says to you, come and follow me. And he takes care of you. He will lead you through any dark valley. He will lead you through... Uh, any time of trial or struggle, he is your good shepherd. Let us pray. Jesus, we thank you for your uh, resurrection and new life, uh, for overcoming death and the grave, the most scariest uh, thing that we can think of in this world. Bless our children today. Bless them with hope and joy and freedom and abundance in you as they know you you and know your name, knowing that you know them. Just bless them, fill them with goodness, and let your resurrection morning uh, be upon them, uh, even in a way that, that they have not expected, in a way of surprise and joy and delight. Fill all of your children with that same sense of goodness and delight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled, removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw that the linen wrappings were lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw, and he believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been laying, one on the head and one at the one and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Mary came to the tomb the day following her Sabbath. She came while it was still dark. It seems that in the chaos of those early morning hours, as Mary arrived she saw and saw the tomb open as Peter and the other disciple came, looked in, went in, saw and believed, and went home. As Mary lingered, so it seems did the darkness that morning. Normally, we as a church celebrate Easter, proclaiming the victory of the day overnight, proclaiming the victory of life over death, and the victory of light over darkness. And nothing has changed in that regard. We too know the tomb is empty. We too proclaim Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. And we will again this year make that proclamation, that declaration. And we believe it. We trust it. We hold on to it. Even in the darkness. But this year, I have to say that I'm, I'm struck and I'm stuck on the words that John uses to describe the chaos of the early morning hours while it was still dark. Easter, it seems, begins in the darkness, the fact that we may have overlooked in years past. Peter and the other disciples had to enter the tomb before they could come out again. Mary took a second look, staring death in the face. She lingered in that place of death, that place of grief and sorrow, 
vulnerable, uncomfortable. And there, and there she bumped into Jesus. Easter, it seems, begins in the darkness. And we find ourselves in a bit of that darkness this year. We find ourselves uh, this year as we gather for Easter. We, we find ourselves with the darkness as our only companion. companion with the darkness that continues to linger. It is an all too familiar place for many in our society, in our culture, and in our world. A place that is all too familiar on an all too regular basis. They are the poor, the overlooked, the unemployed and underemployed, those who are disenfranchised from the normal, bustling, thriving and growing economy that most of us and many of us enjoy. Those living under a bridge, those living under the suffocating reality of a terminal illness, those grieving and longing for a loved one who has died, those living with violence, abuse, and harm to themselves. Those locked in the many in the many war war torn zones throughout our world today, living isolated, alone, afraid, and powerless. The, those who are aging and losing their faculties and their independence. We find ourselves in the midst of a pandemic with the darkness lingering as we are locked in our homes, isolated, watching life go by, life that's out of our control, life lived when we don't know how the story will end. It's a strange place to begin, to begin Easter with the lingering darkness. In the midst of the darkness, Mary wept. Literally, we're told, she lamented. She cried out to God. Out of her broken heart, she cried out to God. Out of her disappointment, her pain, her trauma, and her loss, she sought God's ear. In her loneliness, in her fear, in her powerlessness, in that place of vulnerability, she lingered in the darkness. And there... There she bumped into Jesus. We linger here with Mary this morning in the half light, waiting for the sun to rise. As Nadia Boltz Weber, Weber puts it, Mary remains present. She remains present in the half light lit morning to what is real to what is actually happening. She does so even when that is when that when what is real feels unbearable. Our Lenten theme this year is Awaken, telling your God story. In my own life, in my own life, I know that it's true that clarity, hope, and healing that new life has come when I was willing to linger in the darkness. When I was willing to linger in places where the usual platitudes fell flat and all the easy answers proved inadequate. Jesus comes even as the darkness lingers. And sometimes... Sometimes it has taken a long time to recognize him. He doesn't look the way that I expect him to look. He doesn't let me cling to, the old, to my old ideas. He disappears again just as I grab hold of him. But he comes. He calls my name. And in that instant, I recognize myself and him.
throughout the centuries, many like Mary, mothers and fathers, grandpas and grandmas, husbands and wives, children and brothers and sisters, all who experience pain, disappointment, trauma and loss, loneliness, fear and powerlessness, have over and over again found hope in the darkness as their lives have bumped into Jesus. The in inexplicable, perfectly wonderful love of God. In a beautiful essay on the resurrection, theologian and writer Chris Barnes uh, reminds us of what actually matters during this Holy Week. The question that Easter asks us is not, do we believe in the doctrine of the resurrection? Frankly, that is not uh, particularly hard, he writes. What the Gospel asks is not, do you believe, but have you encountered the risen Christ? Have you bumped into Jesus? What I see in the resurrection narratives are individual people having profoundly individual encounters with Jesus Christ while in the darkness, while lingering there in the half-light. The encounters don't look identical. When Peter sees the empty tomb, he runs away. When the beloved disciples, disciple sees it, he believes without comprehension. When Mary sees it, she weeps and waits for more. Dear friends, the author of Psalm 30, in that psalm the poet declares, Weeping, weeping may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. This is not an easy fought battle. It is a hard fought battle, and oftentimes the morning is long in coming. But dear friends, life our life has been changed. This Easter is strange. Even though we're together, we're alone, we're lingering in the darkness, separate and distant from one another. Let us linger. Let us linger here a while, even though it's uncomfortable. Let us linger here a while, trusting, hoping, and praying that the sun will rise, that the light will dawn. We know that the tomb is empty, that the tomb is open. We know that Jesus is alive, that he is risen. May we, in this lingering darkness, may we bump in to Jesus, the author and giver of life, who comes to wipe away our tears, who comes to bless us with his presence, who comes to call us by name, who comes to give us life. Dear friends, let us linger in the darkness, in the half-light. Let us linger there until we bump into Jesus and find life in his name. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Hmm. I was hoping for a sunny morning, but we're not going to get it.
For the prayers of the day, each petition will end in, Lord, in your mercy, will you please respond with, hear our prayer. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all those who are in need. God of resurrection, from the beginning, you gave the church the gift of women as your witness, as preachers, teachers, and leaders. Open our ears to their proclamation this day and always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All your creation praises you. The earth, the hums, the sea pulses, the stars shine, and the galaxies whirl in glorious harmonies to honor you. Let us hear and blend our voices in the song. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The countries of the world experience disunity and conflict. We set our minds on fear and greed rather than on, the rule, on your rule of justice and steadfast love. Build up all countries on the cornerstone of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We will still weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Cradle the fearful, the suffering, and the dying assuring them of your loving presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless the creation of this helpful service of worship leaders this day, the musicians, the ushers, the greeters, the worship leaders, assistants, preachers, readers, and all those who provide welcome and hospitality in our midst. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, you went ahead of us into the grave and defeated the powers of evil. We remember those who have died. Inspire us to live our lives in this resurrection hope and draw us nearer to you in our final days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
The mission of Emmanuel continues, even though we're not sitting together in the pews this day, the mission continues from your homes, from wherever you're at, and I pray that you've been finding new and exciting ways that you can be a part of the mission of Christ. And the mission of Emmanuel continues, and we ask that you continue to find ways, if you're able, to give to the church, whether that's through checks in the mail, in person, or even our online giving. So in anticipation of all these gifts and offering, we, we do the offering prayer together. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at this table for service in your name, in the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our sending song is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. And hopefully you have something around you that you can hit, bang, make a loud noise, because Christ is risen, he's risen indeed. We are very joyful about that. So let's sing together. Receive this Easter blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. And let's do it one more time. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen. 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 He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Have a blessed Easter.